evening, everybody. It is Monday, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm both host and founder of BSTL. What does BSTL stand for? It stands for Building Something That Lasts. So here's the thing. I just want to jump right into this conversation. I've got um, a special guest, a friend of mine that is on the podcast today. Uh, Nicole, are you there? Hi, Andre. I'm here. All right, cool. Um, so, Nicole, um, I'm first of all, I'm excited for this conversation. And maybe that's why I sound a little bit discombobulated, if that's a real word. I hope it is. <laughs> so, um, Nicole... Just before we get into this conversation, I'm wondering if you can share maybe just two things with those that are listening um, to our conversation today, something maybe that nobody knows about you or maybe something that people do know about you. Okay, um, so I am a lover of TV sitcoms, uh, my favorite being The Golden Girls. It is my all-time favorite show. I've got all kinds of memorabilia. Um, from the show they're absolutely the best and um, I think maybe the other thing would be my favorite place to be is the beach particularly um, in Jamaica that's where my family's from mm -hmm. and uh, I spend a lot of summers there so it, it holds a special place in my heart and that's my absolute favorite place to be all right so I guess that makes you an island girl that's good yes that's good so um, Nicole so the conversation that we want to have today on our podcast is one that I think every leader um, probably has struggled with or is struggling with. It's the delivery of difficult conversations, okay? And of course, um, it's not just about the delivery. Um, it's about how the receiver receives the feedback. And of course, I know that in your day-to-day -day, uh, workings, dealings, you are working with the uh, TTC. You can explain a little bit more about that if you'd like to. Um, but why don't you go ahead and set the stage for some of the work that you do as it relates to delivering some of these messages around constructive criticism uh, to those that are working with you and or for you? Okay, well, um, yes, I, I work with the TTC. I've been uh, an employee of the TTC now for 16 years. Uh, most recently, I've transferred into our uh, training department, and I am an instructor for our bus services line, and I also dabble a little bit in our um, subway operating uh, procedures as well. I've, I've both uh, driven both modes. So I've been a bus operator. I have been a subway operator as well as in the management side for both positions, uh, supervisor and auditor as well in our transit control department. Uh, so now just working in our training department provides a lot of opportunity for um, communication in the form of feedback. And my job primarily is I uh, train uh, new operators coming into the commission on the bus side, particularly uh, we teach them how to operate the buses. We teach them how to troubleshoot minor issues that could arise. And uh, surrounding that, there are a lot of opportunities where we exchange information. So I, I, I speak with people from all different walks of life. Uh, the TTC hires a wide range uh, of people from different backgrounds, some of which have large vehicle backgrounds, some don't. Mm -hmm. And I have the opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, teach them what we know, and how we like to operate our buses. And it's, it involves safety procedures um, and uh, trouble, like I said, troubleshooting different areas. So in the, within the training, it's a six week long program mm -hmm. and uh, we've got three areas where we're test, where we test the uh, test, the new operators. And um, throughout the training, we, we do a daily practice of what we call a circle check where we walk around our buses and just check the different items, make sure everything is operating the way it should. Mm -hmm. We do, um, Brake checks, making sure that our brakes comply with um, Canadian motor vehicle standards. 
And, uh, and then we, we drive every day. We t- take them on different routes and, um, and this is where the feedback comes in and we guide, we teach. And, uh, at the end of the day, we sort of do a bit of a recap and that's where the feedback comes in. And it's, that's where the, the real challenge <laughs> happens on some days, of course. So I would imagine, and first of all, let me just say this, congratulations. I would imagine, uh, that a, as a woman, and a woman of color, uh, there are not a lot of individuals like you that are working in this department. And so I want to just celebrate that, if you don't mind. Um, but the, 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 the part of this conversation that may be most uh, relevant um, is that at the end of the day, um, as a leader, as one who is training and um, giving people some feedback, it can't be easy. What's the hardest part about giving feedback uh, to individuals that you are training? Oh gosh, um, the hardest part. And I, and I want to thank you for celebrating um, uh, the fact that uh, being as a, a woman of color in this department up until, I want to say we're in September now. So up until the beginning of this year, I was the only one oh, in wow. my section. Yeah. Good yep. for you. Um, it's unfortunate that still in 2023, that statement, you know, the first of or the only of still mm-hmm. exists, but I digress. Yeah. Um, the most difficult part I would say is differentiating between performance mm-hmm. and personality. Okay. Say more and, about that. Well, sometimes what the conflict arises where you're giving someone feedback and it's, it's a touchy subject, especially if it's something that is negative. Okay. Um, so when you're providing negative feedback or corrective criticism, mm-hmm. uh, it's very important. Your choice of words, your body language, your tone, all plays a huge part in how the information is going to land on the receiving end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many factors have to be considered. Uh, believe it or not, gender of who you're speaking to has to be considered Mm -hmm. um um uh, nationality or religion has to be considered in your presentation cultural backgrounds have Mm -hmm. to be considered uh before you go ahead and and provide some feedback so that's always the tricky part is if it's negative now i have to sift through and figure out how exactly can i navigate giving this information without offending the person personally Mm. So when you have to, to, to kind of set yourself up, and I would imagine that because some of this feedback happens at the end of the day, people are tired, uh, they're ready to go home, um, you know, and I'm sure that at times there might be even people that are getting the training that would have been employed initially, and maybe they had some issues around driving and they have to kind of reset and start over again. But as one who is leading these conversations, where do you generally start? So once you've gone through this list of, you know, 10 things to consider, where do you generally start um, these difficult conversations at times? So I like to start always with the positive. The positive is where you get the person's attention Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, um, everybody's here to do a good job. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're here to do your best. You're here training you're trying to obtain the position so the person on the receiving end wants to hear the good stuff so we start there we definitely go in with a lot of the things that happen right for the day the their strengths Mm -hmm. um if they've maybe uh gotten something uh, you know grasped a concept better today than they did yesterday i'm going to lead with that and acknowledge that and 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 uh reinforce that right before I go into now, as opposed to saying, well, here's what we did wrong. Yes. Here are some areas that I think we can work on for okay. tomorrow mm-hmm. and approach it from that aspect and make it a group effort or a partnership in that sense. Okay. Because I, I also want to reinforce the fact that I'm not just saying you didn't do something well. My job is to help change that for them. Okay. So I, I approach it from a standpoint of here's what we want to look at differently. Here's how we want to change it. And here's the outcome that we're looking for. So, all right. So it almost sounds like there's like a three phase uh, process that you use, right? So what you're doing well, 
some opportunities, and then some criticisms. And the reality is, is that when we give positive feedback, I think that's fairly easy. Um, mm -hmm. I think when we talk about areas of improvement, um, at times that could be a hit and miss, but generally speaking, when you talk about opportunities, you know, I think that people begin to visualize or conceptualize what they can do in the areas of opportunity. But it's not those two portions of, of communicating that are generally the issues. I think that the major issues are wh what happens when you now have to say that, you know, even though you've done well on these five things, these last two things, not so well. And there isn't a way to mas massage it in. There isn't a way um, to say it in a great way. You, you kind of have to say, okay, that was not good. Um, if you do that while you're driving the bus, um, that can create an accident. How are you navigating the difficult conversations? Because I think most leaders, we need some help with the difficult stuff, not necessarily um, the good stuff, the middle stuff. I think the, the, the difficult conversations, that's where we're, we're looking for some help. Well, the, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the first things first would be to set the expectations. Okay. So, uh, right, at, right out of the gate, we're going to set the expectations and we give a syllabus for the duration of the course mm -hmm. and trainees have an opportunity to look ahead and see, okay, I know by this point, mm -hmm. here's where I need to be. I need to grasp this particular concept. Mm -hmm. And we have a scale. Uh, of one to three, which ones are level ones, level twos and level threes. And it breaks down in their booklets right. what action is considered a level one when it becomes a level two and when it becomes a level three. Level one is beginner. Level two is you're working on it with maybe some coaching from me. And level three is at this point, you should be doing it on your own without my coaching. Mm -hmm. So that expectation is set right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So as we're going through a particular process within the training, I'm always reinforcing, okay, so let's look at this particular practice. What level should we be at at this point? Mm -hmm. And here's where I'm, I'm going to either demonstrate or display why, mm -hmm. present some reasons as to why they may be on one level versus another. Maybe you're still at a level one for this one because we haven't quite got this particular concept yet and so forth. So the expectation is crystal clear. Um, delivering the information now, even though if we get to somewhere that should be a level three and the, it just isn't quite happening, right. that part is always tricky. Okay. And unfortunately, no matter how you give the information, it's never received well. Okay. Um, but it has to be done because this type of position is safe, safety sensitive. Right. And as a leader, I have to recognize that although the information may not be received well and they may not like to hear what it is I have to say, right. it's, it's my signature on the line that's verifying whether this person is ready for the job or not. So, so I, yes, please. Okay, sorry to interrupt. So I want to ask this question, right? And even though I know we're talking about what you do for the TTC, uh, I think what you're sharing, um, these skills are transferable, right? So... I would imagine that when you now have to train someone, or, or maybe I don't know, so let me ask, um, when somebody comes to you, do you get them right out of the gate, or are you getting them at the point of which you are now beginning to evaluate them? Now, let me, let me tell you why I'm asking the question, because I think that at times it can be frustrating um, for leaders who now have to do coaching um, of individuals that they didn't get from the start. And, mm -hmm. and so because you didn't get to shape them out the gate, even mm -hmm. though they have the expectations, to some mm -hmm. degree, you may be undoing some of what has been already uh, taught to them or coached to them by a different leader who may or may not be as thorough as you are. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So it's, that does happen. Okay. Most of the time uh, when a, an instructor is given and we get two trainees per one instructor, 95% uh, of the time I'm getting them right out of the gate. Oh, nice. Meaning I'm, yeah, I'm getting them directly. So there's a portion of the training the first few days is simply just about uh, learning some of the break processes and that's all done in the classroom. Mm -hmm. 
And once it moves to the actual bus portion where they're looking at the bus every day, they're on the bus every day, that's where I step in. Okay. And generally, I have them right up until the end of the course. Now, unfortunately, sometimes what happens is for, you know, people get sick and you have to cover someone else's class, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, But generally, you stay with the same two trainees throughout the course. Mm -hmm. Um, I find when it comes to undoing something someone else has done is usually uh, the trainees that come into the commission with previous large vehicle experience. Mm. That's when I find that's when I, it it, it becomes an, okay, I have to undo this particular habit Mm -hmm. when they're coming in as someone who's either, you know, only driven a car or maybe they've never worked in this line of work before. They're coming from a customer service background, the opportunity to mold them, mold their practices into what TTC is looking for as a, as a safe operator is far easier than someone who's coming in maybe with a school bus B license. I like that because what I think I'm also hearing you say is, is that depending on how you find people in terms Mm -hmm. of this coaching process, that will determine how you, how they receive some of the feedback. So let me ask you this question then, if I may, do you prefer to get them from scratch or would you prefer somebody that has the experience? Oh gosh, that's such a tough one. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough call because both have their own, uh, benefits and both have their downsides. For example, somebody who has that experience, when it comes to teaching them the fundamentals, like how to position a bus in, 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 you know, processing a right turn, for example, they're a lot, because they understand the concept of the large vehicle and the fact that you're essentially carrying a 40 foot long, uh, rectangle around a bend so to speak Mm -hmm. um they can understand the concept of space spatial awareness and angles a lot simpler a lot easier than someone who's only driven a car but somebody who's driven only a car they're a lot more open to receiving the information as it's presented to them rather than them thinking about uh whereas somebody who has the large vehicle experience says well this is how i've done it here I don't understand why I can't just do it the same way. Mm-hmm. Right. So they, they both have, they both have their benefits and downsides. And I just think really it just comes down to uh, somebody who's open and willing to receive the information. So, all right, I'm going to ask another hard question then. Mm-hmm. Um, so because you represent a small number of trainers that do what you do in both gender and ethnic background, how has that created some challenges? Do you find that maybe at times when you are coaching a man, maybe from a different culture, uh, they may be, you know, a little bit more sensitive as to you giving them feedback based on culture? Uh, What if it's a woman that's around the same age? Um, Is it more challenging as she may not take you as seriously despite your a job description. I don't know. I'm just throwing these things out because I, I really don't know. Um, mm-hmm. how, how are you How are you experiencing the different types of individuals that you have to lead and or tra- tra- uh, train? Oh gosh! And every example that you've mentioned and then some. I've I've are, I've been I've been through and and, and I've experienced them all. Mm-hmm. And what it really comes down to is, um, you know, I do my job to the best of my abilities and I come with a a pretty heavy, uh, experience base. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about maintaining my professionalism first and foremost. I'm firm, but I like to be fun because Mm -hmm. who, who wants to sit around and, you know, be, Uh, bored all day when you're learning to drive make this turn no you want to keep things light but still respectful right yeah um but i do have to be firm because there are challenges that are presented just because i'm a woman showing up to the job because uh the sides of my head are shaved Mm -hmm. there are sometimes right perceptions um that are that are built in or 
even just by the color of my skin. Um, you know, I've had to experience the fact that a trainee just has decided that I'm not the right person mm. to help them get this job. And I have to say, you know, I am, I am supported very well by our management team mm -hmm. and uh, they are uh, open to hearing and are very supportive of our instructors. I'm not just going to say myself, but right. us as a team of instructors. Yes. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's about maintaining my professionalism. My reputation precedes me and I pride myself in that. Right. So firm, fun, and just doing my job. Well, that's, that's pretty much how I get around that. So you've, you've also said something that I think is important, um, in the, in this conversation, um, because I'm sure that word does get around, right, in terms of mm -hmm. who do you want to get trained by, and then they might be like, yeah, I heard Nicole's really good um, because she does 1 through 10. Um, but I also think um, that for some, as you are leading and training and developing individuals, they may sometimes internalize what you're saying about their work um, and compiling that or 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 melding that with what you are actually saying about who they are. So mm -hmm. how do you then separate this critique, right? Because you're talking to a real person who has real um, feelings, um, who is listening to what you're saying and then filtering it through their own presuppositions um, based on who you are or how they even perceive themselves. How do you help people to hear you? Because I think sometimes in coaching and, and constructive criticism, what you actually meant to say, they may not receive that because they're internalizing it as a slight against themselves. How do you, how do you help them to hear you um, it, through the process? Ah, that, that's a good question. I like to refer things right back to the fundamentals, which are their booklets. Okay. The book, our, our booklets give a pretty uh, specific guideline for what we're looking for. And when I'm giving feedback, particularly negative feedback, and I shouldn't say particularly negative, actually, it applies both ways. Um, when I'm giving feedback, I go directly into our book and say, all right. And I and everything I've done for the day is literally listed out in our books. Right. So when I'm giving you something, it's not because, oh, we tried something today and it didn't work. No, it's mm -hmm. right here in your book. This is what we're doing today. And here's exactly what happened. Now, in the process of that, too, what I what I'm finding that someone is struggling maybe with an aspect of the training, mm -hmm. I do my best to now put myself in the ring. And what I mean by that is I will demonstrate. I will even ask for feedback from the trainees. Is there another way that you think you can understand this information better or this concept better? And that's part of my job is to pivot. If I find that something isn't working for a trainee, it's my job to seek it out, seek out what other way can I present this information to help it land. Mm. And sometimes it comes directly from them. You know, I've had trainees say to me, Nicole, maybe if you show me, I, I can understand. And I'll jump in the seat if I have mm -hmm. to. Right. If it if it means I have to jump in the seat, I will jump in that seat to say, okay, watch me do what I'm doing. Right. Take a notice of this. Take a notice of that. And then I go directly to their book. Mm -hmm. They've got a workbook and then they've got what's called a DPR, which is a daily progress report. Mm. So between the two books, we're, we're looking at, okay, here's the concept we should be getting today and here's how it is on paper. Here's what it looks like in your book as far as a score and where you should be in terms of levels. And now I'm going to show it to you. Mm. Right. So yeah. all, all of those combined, I find usually works best and, you know, it helps us understand each other. You know, and I like what you're saying, um, because I, I think for a long time, I myself have, has always been an advocate of uh, systems and processes. Right. So it sounds to me like, number one, there's a well-established system that is there. Um, it also sounds like you're saying to them, this is where we need to end. So everything that we do from here to the end is intended to help you to be prepared to be successful. But without processes in place, then the truth is it's going to be hard because some might, you know, take it personal 
Uh, mm -hmm. They may even think that uh, you are picking at them, right? Depending mm -hmm. on how they are perceiving the feedback. But I like that. I, I like the fact that in the organization that you belong to, they have given you something that almost eliminates, as long as you are coaching well, um, the ability to really, for people to really uh, take personal um, the things that you're saying to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's part of why I think our, our system is as good as it is. Um, because everything is laid out in front of you, there's very little wiggle room to say, well, I didn't get this information or I didn't understand. It's, it's all right. It's laid out for you, right? The process is there. The booklets are there. You know what your expectations are. And my job, like you said, uh, Andre, is to get you there. So yeah. what can I do? Yeah. That's how I throw myself into this. Tell right. me what I can do to get you there. Based on what we've got to do here and our goal, Yeah. what do you need from me to get you to the finish line? Yeah, and I, I like that. And, you know, I still have to do this um, in this conversation. So, yes, I, I do understand the process of getting people from A to Z, whatever that looks like, there's a process. And of course, it looks different because different people learn on different curves. But here's the thing that maybe we want to hear, um, along with everything else that you've said. What do you do with somebody that cannot be coached? And clearly, if you mm -hmm. give them the signature on the bottom line, you are putting yourself in jeopardy of losing um, the respect uh, that you have developed over these 16 years as, as you've worked in different um, uh, capacity, how, how are you delivering your converse, conversations to individuals that should not be driving that bus? Oh, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I, I laugh because that's, oh, I hate that part of my job so much. <laughs> oh, I know you do. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I hate that part of my job so much because it stings. It's never good. Yeah. It's never good. It doesn't feel good for me to deliver it. And again, it doesn't feel good for them to receive it, but it's happened. And I'm honest. I have to be because I, you know, I, I think of this process as I have a lot of family, friends, nieces and nephews who take transit. Right. And I put myself in the position of, do I want this person transporting my grandmother right. on the bus? Right. Do I want this person transporting my 12 year old niece on the bus? And if yes. the answer is no, yes. Not that it makes it easier, but right. it makes it necessary. The conversation is necessary. Yeah. And if need be, um, I can call in re reinforcement or assistance. I should okay. say not reinforcement. That's the wrong word, but okay. I can call in assistance from either uh, another instructor. Okay. I can call in. We have our chief instructors who will come out and ride along with us. So if we find that a trainee is experiencing some difficulty and we've tried different concepts and it just isn't landing and this is what is happening now, a chief can be called in and they will ride along with us for the day. Wow. Okay. And they will monitor what we're doing. They will monitor the way that we're delivering the information. They may even step in if they see that we're trying and it still isn't landing because now we've given them the heads up that this person right. might be struggling with yeah. an area. Right. So they'll step in if need be and go through us, you know, go through the day with us. And at the end of the day, if right. the chief, uh, the chief instructor and the main instructor for uh, these trainees, yes. if, if the information aligns and the chief can see that, yep, this probably isn't the best opportunity for them to be behind one of the wheels of our vehicle. Right. Then a meeting is called and we sit down and we discuss it. And unfortunately, you know, if, if, if that's the way, uh, if, if they're still not grasping the concept and we don't feel that they're safe and they could be a danger, then they are discontinued from our program. And it, it's, it's not the best part of the job, but right. if it's necessary, conversation needs to be had. And I like that um, because, you know, sometimes depending on the organization that you belong to, um, you don't have that support. Right. So right. Right. some in some organizations, they're going to say to you, you know, you got to put on your big boy or your big girl pants and you've got to go in there and you've got to deliver it. And, you know, go ahead. Everybody has to go through that. But I think that mm -hmm. it's important um, in terms of level of accountability 
that when there is someone else that you are working with, one of your colleagues that have the ability to ride with you, um, because you could be wrong, right? Um, you may yes. a- assess and see this person as uh, a red flag on some level and say, no, I don't think so. And then your your counterpart or senior uh, comes in and says, you know what? No, you know, part of what it is is maybe you are hel- hel- um, helicoptering over them. And yes. because, you know, you're a little bit too close to them, they notice that if you sit a little bit further behind or if you say less, then their nerves ca- um, calm down a little bit. But I think I like the idea that when you have to deliver difficult messages, um, the importance of maybe doing it as a team uh, to ensure that, that you're not in there by yourself, right? Because sometimes people will say, well, you know, this is what Nicole said or this is what Andre said. Right. And it could right. not be further from the truth. Um, but if you have somebody that has ridden along and seen what they're doing and realizes, no, this person at this stage of life anyways is not going to be a fit based on the overall product. And I'm glad that you brought that in um, when you gave the example of your grandmother, right? So, you know, the mm-hmm. reality is, is that TTC is not just about the vehicle. Anybody could drive a vehicle, right? It's about right. the service that is provided. Yes. It's the safety, the product of this is a viable option for those who may not have their own personal transportation or they right. choose to be uh, driven around. And, yes. and and I think that part of this, this conversation, this difficult conversation anyways, is understanding that I am here as a buffer to ensure that the product of safe transportation is delivered regardless of whoever you are that I'm training. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. And and that's all it really is, is just to make sure we are producing safe operators. None of this is personal. And we right. really try to reinforce that message. And, you know, I've got to say, even when I've given that example to trainees before, mm-hmm. you know, think about who's going to be on your buses, who right. think about your family and your friends. And right. So I got to tell you that I can't tell you how many trainees have it sort of sunken in and they say, oh, OK. Right. And they take that moment and think, OK, this is not about Nicole. This is not about me personally. This right. is about making sure our our customers, our passengers are safe when they're on our vehicles. So, Nicole, you're not going to believe it, um, but mm. we've been talking now for almost half or a little bit over half an hour, uh, which oh, means wow. that this has been a great conversation. But I would like to also give you an opportunity. I mean, you've said so many things that I'm processing right now, but maybe you'd like to just kind of uh, summarize and bring this home uh, so that our listeners will get the point that you want to make around delivering messages and how do you make sure that the receiver hears what they need to hear based on this book or this process, these systems. Please give us a summary. Well, uh, overall, I'd like to say, you know, there there's a lot that can be said for, um, I'm sure everybody's heard of the term, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. And most importantly, you want to take your time, you want to consider your audience, and you want to give as much information as possible, mm-hmm. uh, provide them with uh, details, keep information, get, or sorry, present information that is specific, Mm -hmm. give examples and throw yourself into the ring. Talk Mm -hmm. about how the information, how your, your feedback is going to impact their next steps. And that's all you're trying to do is to make sure that, uh, you know, they receive the information Mm -hmm. best way that they can to process and understand. Yes. To make sure that you, as the deliverer, are giving all the details necessary so the receiver can understand. And at the end of the day, once you set a goal and the both of you are in it working towards it, if everybody does their part and, and is, is thorough in, in uh, how they're contributing to the goal, there's no doubt that uh, working together, you'll get the job done. Yeah. And, and I like that um, summary because I think sometimes as leaders, if we don't put ourselves in the seat of the person that is now at that same stage that we were 15 and 16 years ago and 20 years ago, then it's going to be hard 
for us to coach them. And yes. I would imagine that the, the individuals that do well with you, and I'm sure that there are a lot that do, those individuals do well when they can see that you are for them. And so yes. it, it's not easy to coach. It's not easy to lead. Yes. And it's not easy to deliver these hard messages. But if we have the same criteria for each person, you know, and we didn't even get to talk about favoritism today. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. talk about that next time. But as long as we are all using the same process to deliver these difficult but necessary conversations, I think long term, not only will we have better operators in the TTC, but I think we'll have better leaders who are leading people who will one day, um, Nicole, take your seat um, as trainers um, through this process because nothing lasts forever. And right. as long as we are fair and consistent, I think that the product of safety in your world or the product of great leadership in everybody's world, it only gets better and better with time. Thank you so much, Nicole, um, for joining us uh, tonight. We've enjoyed the conversation and I'm so glad that you came on. And I promise you, uh, we're going to have to have another conversation. There's some other things that you spoke about that we don't have time <laughs> um, for today, but we're going to get you back on the show again. So, I would love that. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much. No problem. To those of you that have been listening, um, this is Andre Anderson again and Nicole Thomas. Uh, if you want to reach out to me to have a different kind of conversation about this thing, it's bstlinc21 at gmail.com. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and or share. Because these conversations about leadership and conversations and delivering them, these are things that no leader can avoid in the process of leading people. And all we're doing is we're sharing because the goal is to help each person that wants to do better to do better while we all grow. Until next time, take care for now. Bye.